Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advice on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And on your screen you see Dirado, Captain Cook chronograph in a brushed bronze case. And what you see on your screen is what you get when you buy the watch. So the watch comes with two different NATO straps. The one that you see that is mounted on a watch that is having a matching golden stripe, a blue NATO, completely new NATO, or a leather strap. And all of those, of course, you can change them by yourself with the so-called easy clip system. No tooling is necessary. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Rado is really showing its competence in materials when we talk about this Captain Cook chronograph. We do have, as I said it before, a completely brushed bronze case, but also the push pieces to start, stop the chronograph and the crown are made out of bronze. Only the case back is not. The case back is made out of titanium and this for reasons, anti-allergic reasons if there would be some issues directly on your screen, but mostly there aren't, but yeah, to be on the safe side, so they decided to use titanium. Okay, let me start, present you the watch. 43 millimeter, the diameter, the thickness of this case, as you see it now on your screen, is a 14.8 millimeter, but please, it's not including the NATO strap. The NATO strap, of course, when it is slided through, adds some millimeters of thickness that will, of course, add on your wrist, but the case thickness alone is 14.8 millimeter. And the legendary lug to lug distance, so from one lug end to the other lug end, is 49.50, almost 50 millimeters, so 49.5 millimeters. Meters. The watch is pretty light. I've been weighing the watch with the different straps and executions. So with the NATO, as you see it right here on your screen, it has a weight of 98 grams. And if it is worn with the leather strap that has, as I said it before, this easy clip exchange system, easy to do. I will show it in front of the camera to you so you can Trust me, no rocket science. If you wear it with the leather strap, you have a weight of 95 grams, so pretty light. Um, nice looking chronograph, um, I have to admit. I very much like the fact that they did not include a hour counter, so they stayed on this configuration, having the running seconds at three o'clock and the 30 minute counter at nine o'clock. Completely sufficient, I think. Uh, since most of the use of a chronograph happens only in short time measurements, so you don't really need it. And if you want to push it a little bit further, then you can also argue and say, okay, it isn't a real chronograph at all, because um, there are some things missing, like the graduation in between, yes, the seconds, there's no graduation. So anyhow, you couldn't read any more details, precise details of a measurement you are making. So the chronograph is here more um, a kind of a lifestyle chronograph you probably use to uh, cook some spaghettis or yeah, your tea or pff, I don't know, whatever you want, but probably not the tool you are going to use to make some yeah, complicated or precisely sports uh, time measurements. When you turn the bronze case around, you see the titanium case back, screw down titanium case back. I have to say, why did they use titanium? I just want to repeat that once again. In uh, very, very seldom cases, there might be, there might, I say might, a conjunctive, might be some allergic reactions coming um, from the alloy, from the uh, bronze alloy, but this is a very rare thing. And so to be on the safe side, yeah, you use a titanium case bag and here it is. So what you see uh, looking through the sapphire crystal, you see the Rado Caliber R801. 
Um, it's on automatic, you see this automatic, here is the winding rotor, uh, automatic movement with a quite huge barrel, um, you nicely see it, wait, I have to point it out, it's here, and that huge barrel delivers 59 hours of power reserve, that's not bad at all, it's a 4 hertz movement, let me show this, I will point, um, here is the balance wheel, oscillating at 4 Hz or 28,800 semi-oscillations per hour. There is a silicon air spring being used, so the uh, anti-magnetic um, properties of the movement are for sure quite good. I, will, um, I esteem this and I think uh, they do their job at ETA in the moment, knowing that Magnetism in general is the enemy number one of a modern mechanical wristwatch. So having a silicon hairspring is always a huge advantage, a huge advantage. Um, what else uh, can I say? On top, Rado claims and says that the movement is not only regulated in three positions, but in five positions. This adds, of course, accuracy and precision. So. Um, how can the guy know that this is a modular chrono? <laughs> I can tell you, it's a modular chrono. Look, what do you see here? You can um, see that there is a misalignment of the crown and the start, stop and reset push piece of the chronograph. And um, yeah, this is the sign that we do have the crown, of course, operating the base plate where you have uh, the automatic movement and the push pieces are linked to the module that is, that is put on top, on top. And yeah, this is a slightly a, a, a misalignment. It is a little bit, um, yeah, um, less to see or harder to see since all these uh, crown and push pieces are quite big. So you don't really see it. Would they be smaller? You would probably see that much more prominently. So push pieces, and, and let me say, bronze, bronze, bronze. Everything is bronze, you see here, even though um, it is polished. So the entire case of the watch is brushed, but these pieces here are polished. It is a uh, push piece with a screw down security or protection, you have to unscrew as I just did. You see here, this is the uh, push piece, start stop push piece uh, un when it is unscrewed. So you can now operate it and you see that the central second hand stopped at nine seconds and it started again at to um, swipe over the dial. Once you close or you screw down, you have, um, the complete water protection, and there is no way of doing anything here. Uh, let me open up again. Let me also unscrew the reset push piece here. You can do it with gloves. That's always a very good sign. And what I want to show you is you can try, but there is no possibility to reset. So it's not a flyback chronograph. So what you have to do is you need to stop first, you see the second hand stopped and now watch, I will reset. There you go. You added the reset. So um, this is how you operate the chronograph. Of course, also the crown is uh, um, screwed down, has to be the case. By the way, it's waterproof, waterproof up to 300 meters or 30 bar. So the watch is ready to be used in water as much as you want. Even you may go diving, you could go diving with it, why not? So, um, same here, same procedure, screw down crown. First position, in theory, theory, you may wind the watch if needed, otherwise it is automatically wound by the rotor I just showed you. And the first position, we come to the position where you can do some adjustments with the date. I always set the watches eight, lucky eight, lucky number eight. And uh, I will now quickly run you through the other numbers or the other uh, digits. And so you can see it, of course, double digit, you have a smaller display of the date and so on. Now comes the 20th and then you see how this looks like. There we go. 
Um, typically for Rado, the uh, date disc is held in uh, a silver color and printed red. This is a link to the past of the company, to the Captain Cook, to the early Captain Cook models that all had date indications in red color. So they keep that very cool. Why not keep some tradition? And uh, yeah, it is, the readability is not bad. It's not bad and you don't have the risk. You also have to say that as you don't, if you have a, a date disc that is in silver, you don't have the risk of um, yeah, mismatching colors, dial and date disc. So you are yeah, on the safe side. Okay, let me bring you to the Fretius quickly. And you see this, 31st. And now watch, we're going back to single digit. And of course, yeah, big must be. Now let me stop at the 7th. I will pull out the crown and what you see, hacking seconds, both the running second and the central second hand stopped. They both stopped. And what I will do now, I will advance the hands and show you the date change at midnight. I have not done this before. So it will be a surprise as well for me. What will happen? Do we have an instantaneous state change? Please watch. We are at 9, 19 uh, p.m. or um, 21, 19 in the evening and we are approaching midnight. And now let us together see what will happen. Is there is going to be an instantaneous date change? Uh, almost, yeah. It is. So you have a slight movement of the date disc starting 10 to and but before midnight or even precisely at midnight the day change happened. So you are really um, getting what you expect from a modern movement. Very nice. And yes, what I'm doing, I'm bringing it back to 10 past 10 and make the watch, the watch head in this case, smile at you again. Let us together continue to discover the uh, Captain Cook chronograph. I have been putting back a NATO strap, this time the one without the matching gold stripe in the middle. That's a deep blue NATO that goes on it too. Looking on the back side, how it looks like. Yeah, it goes underneath. And this is a true NATO, not one of those being attached on the spring bar. And there is nothing underneath. Some can now say, okay, the ones that are look, they, they look like an auto, but aren't an auto. They don't add up um, ad additional um, hate, um, yeah, thickness. <sighs> okay. This is an endless discussion. Do you want a really NATO, not, not a really NATO, a fake NATO? Oh, we could discuss this all day long, but yeah, here we add some. We add some thickness. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, just wanted to, to show you this. But um, let me come back to the uh, basil. Uh, the basil is, of course, made out of, um, of bronze. And we do have a blue ceramic inlay. Blue ceramic inlay. And you will see in the dark shot, it is, yes. Yes, Super Luminova is, it's Super Luminova filled and you will see everything is nicely looking in dark conditions. Very nice, I have to say, very nice. Oh, is it uh, yeah. unidirectional? Yes, excuse me. Of course, it has to be. Um, it is nice sound. I just, yeah, discovering the sound here. Nice, a little bit. Um, tricky with the gloves as always you know my problems I have doing reviews with gloves it is always a little bit difficult and we do have 120 clicks I came came back to the center to zero if you want to put it but it is only directional turning um, ceramic inlay and everything in bronze bronze okay also the push pieces even though they don't look like when you get the watch in your hands and you see that the first time since everything is matte and mostly you see bronze cases or bronze uh, be, being uh, matte, matte executed but these parts are polished and uh, I had some doubts in the very first moments when I got the watch in my hand is this bronze yeah it is I, I, I I'm sure it is bronze <laughs> yeah we have a boxed sapphire crystal. 
Yes, with an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. But here some distortions. Um, depending on the angle you are looking on the dial, you will get some distortions. Um, this is nothing you need to worry about. Readability due to the contrast, gold and a navy blue is quite good. Oh, quite! It is excellent. Come on, you can perfectly read the time from this watch. And uh, but if you look on the dial in a certain angle, there is, there are, there are distortions. And yep, here they are. And here you see um, the slightly boxed sapphire crystal. As I said, anti-reflective treatment on both sides. And the sapphire crystal on the back side only has an anti-reflective treatment on the inner side. So now it becomes time that I show you how to change the set. The watch is fitted with a NATO. I will now slide out and I, do all, all, I will do this with my gloves. So I will slide out the NATO. Here you go. That's how you slide out. And now you have the watch head. And, 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 and here, 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 look, look, spring bar. And you nicely see on the spring bar there are two pins. And uh, if you take these pins in between your nails, you will be able to, without a problem, to open up the spring bar as I did right now. There you go. You need to dismantle the spring bar. Here you see, no rocket science, no cheating, that's life. This is the spring bar. Just be sure when you take those spring bars out to put them in on a safe place because you will need them again when you put off the leather strap. Now, here comes the nicely executed leather strip. Um, how do you know which side is upside down? It's easy, um, the buckle always comes at 12 o'clock. So again here, um, easy clip system as uh, Raudo calls it, easy clip. You see here there's a pin, the spring bar has a pin. So you choose one side, you see that there is that hole, you choose one side, then you Oops, yeah, yeah, it's the gloves. It's not me being not able to do it, but it's the gloves. It's not easy, I can promise you, but look, I have been pulling it in and now I'm just seeking. Yeah, have you seen? Click. It, it's fixed. And I will show you the same exercise again. Here, same thing, little pin. Um, you insert one side of the spring bar, then you push down with the pin, ah, and you see, have you seen this? It's stable, I'm pulling everything, it's stable. And this is how you exchange and how you swap bracelets. Ah, bracelets, straps. I was talking about bracelet because there is, and we should mention this, this chronograph is also available in uh, steel in two executions and with blue and a black dye looks gorgeous an alternative if you say to yourself yeah the bronze case is nice but uh, the appearance is like if i would wear a gold watch that might be dangerous because then they maybe um, yeah they they try to steal it can happen because you have to be aware of that this is bronze and not gold it could be yeah, if you want to show off, you can say, I'm wearing a gold watch. And uh, yeah, one could believe you because yeah, it's really difficult to distinguish if this is gold or bronze. But it is bronze, I can tell you. It has to be bronze because the watch is sold, as you see it here on your screen, for 4,750 euro, including 20% VAT here in Austria. And with it comes an Beautiful, beautiful box, and I will show you the box just uh, also in this video. So please stay tuned. Discover also the box that comes along with 4750 is the price for the bronze version. I have not yet answered you the question if the pin buckle is bronze too. Yes, it is. So um, clearly, yes. Um, same applies uh, to the NATO, strap, NATO straps you get with. Um, you see here, uh, Rado is being engraved. Uh, you have the anchor, the Rado anchor, and uh, also the loops. 
The loops are made out of bronze, so there is no cheating here, coloring uh, a steel or something. No, that's all bronze. Same applies also to the all blue. Um, Nato, it is a bronze pin buckle. You have the same rado engraving, the loops, etc. All in bronze. That's really nice as it should be in such a case when you buy a watch. Um, yeah of this price range, of this quality, etc. And nice also, look the stitching. The stitching here completely matches the color of the case. Very, very nice. So it's really something, um, yeah, and look, nice. Very cool. This is how the watch looks when it is being worn on the leather strap that belongs to the Chrono, the Captain Cook Chronograph. That's how the uh, leather strap looks like when you close the pin buckle and you slide the end through the two loops. That's how it looks like. And yo, I could quickly um, take off uh, the leather strap again. So you uh, trust me that this is no rocket science. You see here, I use the pin, I squeeze um, and then I can take it off, the spring bar. Now you need these uh, spring bars, the ones I told you not uh, to take care of because uh, if you are going to put it back, yeah, this is now a bit difficult with gloves uh, because I can't even, so excuse me. So now look here and uh, this, yeah, no, this is an exercise you can't do with gloves. I tried, I tried, I will have to take off my gloves and I'll show you. No way doing this with gloves uh, because you definitely um, need to squeeze uh, the two pins uh, with your nails and then you, you just go there and then you fix it on one side and then on the other side and then it's no longer rocket science as you just saw. But these little pins you need to squeeze them uh, in between your nails. And this is something um, I can't do, so uh, forgive me for touching the watch with my fingers. It's something I normally don't do because I respect. Uh, yep, here you go. But you see, it's easy, really easy to do it. And now, okay, let's, which one you want? This one? Yeah, let's take the one perfectly matching, 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 matching. Uh, same here. Which, uh, si uh, which, uh, uh, on which side to put the pin buckle on 12 o'clock side. You slide, let me show you, you slide in. Then you slide on the other side. There you go, whoops. Then you put, you cover and you go through the loop here. Once again, quickly let me show that to you. You go through the loop, um, here you go. And uh, once you have been sliding through the loop, you have the watch back in its look uh, with Enato. You have to find the center in between the loops and there the watch is back with the Nato strap. Plus some extra thickness, of course. This is the nice box that comes with the Captain Cook chronograph. If you buy it and uh, you see here size-wise what I'm talking about, these are my hands on the box. You have Velcros to open it, two Velcros. And I'll do this without gloves. I hope you forgive me, but I am doing a single-handed operation here. In one hand I'm holding my camera and with the other hand I'm Phil. Um, I'm, I'm trying to show you the box. So this is the box when it opens up. Here is a Velcro, you can see. I'm attaching it. There you go. Here is the Rado Captain Cook. It is being presented, or when I got the watch, was presented on the leather strap. And um, there is a little door. Once you open the door, you discover the two additional NATO straps that come once again with the watch. You don't need to pay any cent uh, extra. 
or any penny. Um, it is part of that package. And yep, here's the Rado, Captain Cook. And um, this is very, very important. When you want, you pull it out. And there is a little envelope. <clears throat> and in the envelope, you have the spring bars necessary to fix the natos. These are the spring bars, an envelope. There are four of them in there. So in case you lose one, you have a reserve. You have some more. But this is how the watch is being presented. Nice box, very nicely looking. And uh, yeah, here it has been, yeah, was, was given to me by Rado in this configuration. The two uh, Natos were in the spare part box or door. You close, here you go. Rado of Switzerland. And this is the box. Very nice. Something. Yep. You close. And you have again here. This is the Velcro you use to close it. Here comes my favorite part of every hands-on video I do is when I'm able to point out some really nice ads-on or little details the designer, the people being responsible for the design and the look of the watch have been thinking about. First of all, the Rado, Rado Anchor. If um, you've been watching the video so far and you saw the anchor always being misaligned, yeah, it is not misaligned, it is not static. The anchor is moving, as you can see, I've been turning the case around. The anchor turns with us and continues to turn. That's um, yeah, part of Rado's history, the anchor, and it is still here on the dial and it's nice and it is not. Now it is, yeah, since I've been uh, aligning the watch correctly, shaking it a little bit, yep, due to gravity, the anchor now is perfectly aligned, north, south, up, down, as you want. But uh, yes, if you move, the anchor is, of course, following this, the moves of the case. But now comes a very nice little detail. Look, I very much appreciate if uh, the designer of a chronograph takes care a little bit of details. Look. The running second hand has a red tip. And to be sure which of the counter counters belong to the chronograph, also the 30 minute counter has a little red tip. So I know it's a little detail and I know, of course, yeah, there is what would be a 30 minute counter on a chronograph if it wouldn't be the counter of the chronograph. 60 is, of course, the running second, but you could, you could in theory, you could, yeah, but it, it, okay. You could not be able to distinguish them, and you look. There's a little red tip, and the red tip says these two hands belong together. Once the big one turns, the small one moves, and yeah, a nice detail, a very nice detail, I would say. And um, I was talking before about those missing, uh, the missing graduation. You know what? Um, this is a lifestyle chronograph. You won't need uh, the graduation to really uh, distinguish the one eighth of a second uh, because uh, the, the, the movement is a four hertz, it's 28, 800. So the hand, the center second hand swipes with one eighth of a second on the dial. And if you would want to use the chronograph, you would need a graduation of three little dots in between the second dots here. They, it's not there. Um, it looks better. It would be too noisy, too, yeah, would make too much, it would be too much for such a dial. It is much more cleaner, much more sophisticated looking as it is. So bravo rado to not have applied these little dots um, and to keep it as it is. And yeah, it is a lifestyle chrono. It is a cool lifestyle chrono and that's what you get. And if you need a precision instrument, yeah, you will have probably um, to choose another type of chronograph. The Rado Captain Cook chronograph on my 17 centimeter, 6.7 inches wrist in full sunshine. Look, this is how the watch looks like. How it 
sits on my wrist. Uh, yeah, some, I hear you arguing too big, can't wear any mathematical formula telling you wrist size divided by multiplicated by telling you the watch. Oh, come on, I don't care about such calculations, potential thoughts. Uh, some might have, I wear a watch if I like it. It's uh, something I put on my wrist, uh, if it fits on my wrist or not. Something that is not so important to me at least. I know um, some or you might think different, but uh, yeah, I, in this case, don't care because yeah, I either like it or not. The bigger question or the, the, the main question I have is, this is bronze. Yes, you know it, I know it, because we're talking about a bronze watch in this video all the time, but someone seeing it from distance might think it is a gold watch. So um, do you think that there is some misunderstanding, potential misunderstanding? And could this uh, probably prevent you of buying such a watch? Because you might be endangered that someone thinks he should steal the watch or, yeah, steal the watch from your wrist. Do you think that this is something you have to worry or not? Let me know. So now, worn with the navy blue, only navy blue NATO, without that matching golden stripe in the middle. This is probably a more decent way of uh, wearing this uh, chronograph. Still the same watch, still the same size. Here filmed, um, showing the watch, how it sits on my wrist, showing it from the side. Yeah, yeah, here you can see. Um, the NATO adds, adds, adds some thickness. And yeah, but yeah, still cool. I have to say, um, these couple of, uh, these few millimeters more or this little bit more of thickness, it's not bother. It's not really bothering me in a way that I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I would. I would wear it. <laughs> Here you go. Nice, very nice. And the color. Oh, the blue is so extremely nice. So extremely nice. Wow. A worn uh, with the leather strap. This is. I would call it a slim fit version of uh, that chronograph because yes you can deduct the additional millimeters that the NATO strap causes uh, on uh, your wrist adds on uh, some thickness you deduct this and you have a slim fit version still a huge watch yes look closely it adds up some uh, yeah it adds up uh, something on your wrist but it is cool yeah it's a cool watch anyhow the only thing yeah I said it before, is the color. <laughs> I am not sure. I'm not sure if uh, someone probably would uh, think this is a gold watch. And what I don't know, and I did not ask them if this is a stabilized bronze case, meaning that it will build up patina or not. I don't know that. I will add this in the comment section later and um, give you information about that. I don't know exactly if it will build patina or not. Could be. Could be, could be, yeah. I'm not sure. Yes, that's today my favorite part of making this review of the Captain Cook Chrono. It's a hot day and yeah, uh, bringing it to the pool is always a good idea. I decided to use the NATO with the matching golden stripe. And uh, let's see how the watch looks when it is in water. There you go. Filming it in water, zooming in a little bit. And uh, again, we have this kind of uh, timeout function. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is uh, something you can avoid uh, with a normal watch unless it is filled with oil. That on, uh, upon a certain angle, you will no longer be able to read the time because it is mirroring. Oh, the sapphire crystal is mirroring. And no longer, yeah, you no longer read the time. But um, yeah, when I was filming recently um, the Ultra Deep, uh, Omega Ultra Deep, and the Seamaster 300, I yeah said it's kind of a timeout function. You know, you get time out. Oh no, time! I oops, 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 oops. Something to do. It's nine past ten. Yep, no. The watch is set to nine past ten. It's in the afternoon today. But I always set those watches to smile at you because I know. That makes a little difference. The watch looks friendlier. And yeah, this is how it looks. 
when it is in water. There you go. I'm waiting a little bit because it's always nice to show the colors in water. Deep blue and you prominently see the reflections on the inlay, the ceramic inlay of the basil. That really looks gorgeous. Here it is when it comes out. Yes. And yeah. Voila. Here you have the pool shot of the Rado Captain Cook chronograph. Thanks for watching our video about the Rado Captain Cook chronograph. So, what do you think? My question, um, how would you wear the watch? NATO including that matching golden stripe, the navy blue NATO or with the leather strap. Once again, all the three steps you see here on your screen are part of the watch, are part of the price of the watch. The price is 4,750 euros, including 20% VAT. You don't have to pay any extra, including, of course, um, the spring bars. Um, you can uh, open up by yourself. You can exchange everything by yourself. What do you think? Is this a good offer? Is it a cool watch? In your opinion, is the color of the watch maybe uh, too much reflecting a color that also could be gold because one seeing the watch on your wrist might not know what you are wearing and might think that you're wearing a gold watch. So do you think that there is a risk of misunderstandings or misinterpretations if someone sees the watch on your wrist? Would you be scared of that? That's something I'm interested in. Um, please answer it in the comment section. Could be these days, you know, it's always a risk to wear a gold watch in some parts of our world. Even in the best uh, cities, uh, things happen, unfortunately. Or oh, safest cities, uh, things can happen, but this might lead. But it is a cool color, I have to say. It's a cool watch, perfectly executed. Um, you, yeah, you get the entire package. <laughs> no extras to pay. That's very fair. And the quality is, yeah, there's nothing to say about the quality. It's as you expected from Swatch Group, really, you have to think about 4,750 euros. It is hard to top that and hard to make it better, including also the accuracy. I've been testing the watch quickly on my equipment. It's perfectly regulated. Chapeau, heads up, heads off uh, to Rado, to the watchmakers. So you get everything what you want. Your thoughts. Thanks for watching and see you back soon here on Watch Advisor on YouTube. Bye-bye.